Alrighty, so, um, yeah, what's up guys? We are live, we're back, we're doing some cool, fun stuff, just making, I'm thinking we're just making some brushes today, um, while just kind of hanging out, keeping it super casual. Uh, last time we did a lot of sketching, and I kind of continued that a little bit off stream here and there, um, but yeah, right now I'm just doing, doing some, some sketch stuff at the moment. But um, yeah, I anticipate this will be a pretty much a, a pretty short stream, I think, today. Um, but just kind of hanging out, making some making some brushes maybe, trying out some ideas. Um, if you never made brushes before, then this is a great opportunity to, to give it a go. Oh, we got Santiago in chat, Calvin in chat. Nice. Welcome, guys. Welcome. Um, let's see. Always such an adventure. Reminding myself the the agonizing process of brush making in Photoshop. <laughs> Man, it is really fun though, I'll tell you that. Making brushes. Just getting set up here. I don't know if you guys have ever made your own brushes before or like tried stuff out or anything, but um it's pretty cool. Pretty darn cool. So usually you kind of start with uh, pretty sure a white layer and you draw in on top kind of um, the shape that you want pretty much. So the last brush I made was the brush I'm using right now, which, which I made this a while ago. And you can see it's like it's pretty good for sketching, right? But I feel like the texture I chose and some of the settings I went into, you know, there's some things that like could be better, right? I made several iterations of it where one's like kind of softer, but has a different feel. I made one that's more bold, you know, for, for stronger, stronger lines and whatnot, you know, it's kind of vibe. But again, it's kind of like certain brushes are good for different things. And I think that people who say brushes don't matter, I don't know. I don't know what they're trying to prove by saying brushes don't matter. You know, oh, we got, I <laughs> got everybody. Damn, Ray's here, Man is here, Nabs is here, HG, Ryan, let's go. Got everybody. Tilted rectangle kind of brush. Yeah, that's kind of what this one is, right? So if you actually, if we expand it and look at the shape, it's like a weird carved shape. I don't know why I chose this shape. I just kind of did, right? So let's see what we can do here. I'm also just going to kind of be experimenting as well. So I guess we can take an oval shape, just go ahead and fill it in, tilt it on its side, I think is the way to go. Yeah, I definitely that, think that's the way to go for sure. And then depending on what you want to do in terms of like the texture and whatnot for your brush, like this one is 100% like this shape, right? But there's a bit of a soft edge. So I feel like I want to give this a little bit of a soft edge, like not too, not too crispy. Gosh, really has been a while since I've done this. But yeah, let's see. Maybe we can clipping mask this, work that way. So we have our layer, our our uh, our shape here. I feel like we can give it a bit of an edge. Ooh, I feel a sneeze coming. It's like a vague sneeze feeling though. Not 100% sure if it's a authentic sneeze. Oh, nope. It's a lie. The sneeze was a liar. I hate that. I hate that so much. Let's just try adding a bit of texture and uh, we can even increase the size of this and, you know, add some particle effects and stuff. And you think maybe this stuff doesn't matter a lot, like a whole lot, but it matters a lot, a lot. So let's see. We got Martin here. Chi is here. Marco's here. Oh, damn. Welcome, guys. Welcome. Also, welcome to all the new subscribers. Again, all the new subscribers. You guys are, you guys are sweet. My goodness. Can't even imagine, man. Um, all right, and then <laughs> I think this is like defined brush preset. We kind of have it. Yeah, okay, so check this out. So then we have a new brush, this oval shape, right? So we've just taken an oval shape. We'll call it, we'll call it oval test. Oval test. Boop. 
And now we've basically just got this shape. So we'll go to our sketch page and we'll see. All right, so right now it's literally just an oval, right? Nothing too crazy going on here. We just kind of have the shape, but we want to go into brush dynamics and start to figure out some of this stuff. So we have oval brush, oval test here. Uh, and then we're going to go into the brush panel and start messing around with this stuff, man. We're going to have a lot of fun picking and choosing and, you know, all this weird stuff. There's this thing like the brush tip shape where you can kind of change the tip shape. Um, and I don't think we're going to do that too much. We want shape dynamics for this brush, which is cool. Oh, guys, man is right in the chat. You guys got to like the video. Definitely remember to like the video for sure, guys. For sure. Uh, but yeah, this is just going to be a fun little casual video. Uh, so size jitter, we want it to be mm, probably pen pressure, but we don't want it too much, right? We don't want that much. So I feel like the minimum diameter, we want it to be like 50%. And at a distance, we can kind of see if we lower the opacity of this. You know, that's that's a good amount of, it's a good amount of, uh, size difference right or is it all right you know what we're gonna try a more kind of bold look for this i think that's definitely what we're gonna try so we're gonna try like a fun sketching brush uh we do want a texture for this however the texture we choose you know i tried some textures in the past um it's interesting trying to get a brush texture that works uh, I think even just adding in that kind of definitely did some stuff. Let's see. Here, we can zoom in here. Fabrizio's here. Welcome, Fabrizio. New chat member. Let's go. Zella's here. Welcome, Zella. You guys rule. You guys are awesome. You guys are incredible. So yeah, this is a super hard edge right now. All right, let's continue working at this. So we want size jitter. Um, do we want angle jitter? We, yeah, we want angle jitter and we want it to be pen tilt. So this is gonna allow us to move the pen around essentially. Oh, what the heck, it's like weird. We're gonna use arrow keys to rotate the brush back to its original dimension here. So if we curve it, we can get, in theory, kind of a straighter line. If we put it on its back, we get, in theory, a flat edge, right? So we want a little bit of that tilt going on, happening there, right? Boop, 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 boop. Oh my gosh, whoa, new people, let's go. We got Tando, welcome Tando. We got Add Entropy, hello. New viewers, slay. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Let's see, let's see, roundness. Honestly, I don't even know what roundness even is, so we're just gonna leave that. <laughs> um, we do want texture, that's where we left off last time, right? So we want, we do want, how much depth do we want? We do want texture, depth jitter, we want it to be pen pressure, I feel, right? Minimum depth, contrast, brightness, scale. Give it a little more rough texture. Okay, so here's where we're seeing it. Do you see at the at the bottom of the screen here where this is kind of like, we're seeing that depth start to appear? That's where you start to get a little bit of that texture come in, right? But the scale is way off. So if we make the scale really small, you get some of like this going on here, which, oof, that's rough, right? Definitely want to raise the minimum depth for, sh for sure. The scale, maybe we want it to be a bit bigger. All right, now we're starting to get somewhere, a little bit, right? Boom, 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 cool, cool, cool. All right, all right, cool, 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 cool. Oh, we got everybody, damn, you guys are popping off. Oh yeah, also, wait, 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 I also wanna mention that I kinda wanted this to be also a bit of like an AMA stream too. So if you guys have any questions for me about anything, you can ask me any questions if you want. 
but that's just if you want no pressure no pressure <laughs> what up tazzy what up awesome awesome circular gabriel it's true i mean i actually deactivated circular gabriel now it's just regular square gabriel i think yeah i fixed it unfortunately i fixed it so now it's just regular gabriel you can see my traditional setup behind me where i got the whole traditional vibe going on but yeah okay so let's keep messing around with this brush potentially Calvin says dope sweater yo thanks brother man let's go yeah i like the sweater the sweater's cool all right so we kind of made an oval anchor to be honest like if we're looking at this this is actually more of an inking brush a very textured inking brush which is kind of sick right if we were doing like a cool comic page you could be like wham i don't fear the night i fear only regret Right? That kind of vibe, very like gestural. Swing. Let's go back to shape dynamics. Maybe we want the minimum diameter to be a little bit smaller, even like 10%, so that like we maybe get a lot of range. Yeah, that makes this actually a pretty interesting, pretty interesting line brush. I think then for the texture, we want to increase the depth. So that we have a little bit of texture, lower the minimum depth, I think, raise it up a little bit. All right, so now the jitter, the depth jitter is off. So when we get a thinner line, it's more textured, and when we get a thicker line, it's more bold. I like that. It's really nice, actually. Cool. I like this. This is super cool. Boom, boom, boom. Add entry says, just found your found you today. Was watching your last live stream, number 57 in VOD form. Oh, let's go from the VOD. So you saw some fish world stuff. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Very cool. Oh yeah, also guys, I'm gonna make the uh, the spots open for sale for my next course that I'm gonna do in, it's looking like February. So in tomorrow's stream, I'm gonna drop a link to that, the Gumroad page, so people can reserve spots. So that's gonna happen, which is exciting. And uh, yeah, the last one sold out completely, full class. So this one, I'm gonna add two more seats, so it's 12, 12 seats. And um, yeah, for those of you who want to improve your character design, we'll check that out for sure. Ryan says, time to make that cash. Oh, nice. That's awesome. <laughs> Ad Entropy says, is it a live thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be seven. I'm debating on making it eight weeks, actually. I don't know yet. Um, but yeah, no, I think, I think we'll stick to seven. It's a seven-week character design class uh, where... We are going to explore so much. I can't even explain it right now. It's like so heavy. Um, Fabrizio says you provide that brush somewhere. Oh, I mean, my patrons get my brush pack for free. I mean, I get their patrons. So, you know, the supporters who are in the discord, it's my, my beta brush pack is in there and I'll, I'll include, I'll drop this one in as well. I've been slowly making brushes, but I don't, I don't know. I don't have enough to like sell as a pack. So we'll see. But yeah, I'm liking the dynamics here. I'm wondering if there's any changes I want to make before I ship this one off. I think it's pretty good, you know? Let me try my signature. Ooh. Okay, okay. I kind of like this brush, to be honest. It's interesting. 
Um, I wonder how I would draw characters with this, what that feeling would be. How would I do it? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Oh yeah, also guys, while I'm plugging stuff, signature tutorial. Dude, okay, you wanna know how to make a signature, guys? This is my real advice. My real advice for making a signature is you have to take a blank page and just explore the heck out of shapes and like what different letters grant you access to different shapes, right? So like for my signature, I had a G, right? And the most boring way to draw a G is like this. And so for me, I was like, damn, okay, okay, well, gosh, I like when Gs are more round and when they maybe have like a foot, maybe, but I always kind of had beef sometimes with my name because like Gs were weird. When I was younger, I'd be like, my name is Gabriel, right? But it didn't feel cool enough. So it took a long time. Um, but when I was younger and I did fine art stuff, I had a w weird signature. The signature was this because it was like G and then like a Q shape kind of vibe. Um, so I like had this weird thing. So I always liked this idea of verticality with the signature. And um so I thought about like the energy of where I wanted uh, the energy to go. And so kind of making G a vertical line, like almost like a big J with a cool stop in the middle. And then instead of doing cursive, I just printed it because it kind of has a cool look, right? And then for the Q, same thing. Like I could have just gone with a basic Q, but no, there's a form of Q in like lettering that goes swoosh, like boom, like basically it's like this, right? But I'm like, let's push that. So womb, I, N, N, and the N also shoots out. So you end up with this like, like blam, blam, blam shape. And I like that energy, which is cool. So, so yeah, you know, cool artist needs a cool signature, which is sweet. Um, I do not know how to pronounce that Russian name, my brother. I'm so sorry. He says, make a tutorial for beginners. Um, I would make a tutorial for beginners if there was not, five million tutorials for beginners online already um some great resources to go to are uh cynics cynics makes great ones um proco proco makes great tutorials cynics proco um those are the main ones i think that you should check out which is cool for sure cynics and proco are great other than that, there's a lot of great trustworthy YouTubers out there. There's also a lot of guys who like really don't know what they're talking about. And, but you know, you'll figure that out too late probably. <laughs> but yeah, with signatures, it's interesting. Like, you know, for instance, uh, oh, also my middle name is super cool. I have a cool middle name. It's, it's Zahir, right? But I was trying to make the Z work in my signature and it just wasn't working. Um, so I finally let go of that and that's when I was able to actually get this cool signature, right? When I let go of the Z. Um, but when I have space on the page, like, and I actually have space, sometimes I'll be like, I'll be like, boom, boom, I, E, L. And then I'll be like, shoom, shoom, like shoom, 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 shwam. And then I'll be like, Q, and then I'll do this or something cool like that. So like I can kind of make it work sometimes, but uh, most of the time I just stick to the Gabriel Quinn, big, big round letters that start. You kind of just got to lean into it and make these little guys just their friends pretty much. So like every letter is subservient to the big round G shape. They're like, oh, please don't hurt me. And then Q, wah, I N N, wah, right? Um, but yeah, I remember helping people like, does, I think in the community discord, I was helping someone. I think it was Kelly. I was helping her make a signature. I was like, you have such cool letters. Like you got to figure out like how to make the letters work for you. You know, like there's such cool letters that people don't like try and stuff like, like the letter R again, seems like kind of a boring one, but R is so cool because you can have the foot really be like more than you think. And then you can like push it even more by having a, almost like more of a vertical you know, I am red. That is my name. You can do cool stuff. Um, new lore drop, Gabriel lore. Yeah. Yeah. New lore guys ask me about my lore so we can just hang out and vibe. That's the, that's the purpose of this. Um, oh, yeah, gotta, 
<laughs> kind of messed with somebody. Oh, damn. Yeah, we definitely started the stream late. <laughs> I have to go soon. Um, mer. Ryan says, I'm stealing that. Yeah, dude, for sure. What if the Z went up flowing is a third line above? Maybe. I'd have to see what you mean. I'm stealing everything. <laughs> there's no stealing. This, this is what's interesting. With art, there's no stealing. There's just uh, the truth of appeal and what artists align themselves with that truth. Right? Like if you completely jack someone's composition and style, then I don't know. There's just not much value to the work in terms of like, it's just, I don't know. I feel like it doesn't have too much of an impact. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Cool. 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 Absorb other artists essence. Yeah, literally. Actually, like there's behind every artist that you think their style is original, there's always like 20 artists that they just take a little thing from each of those artists. And as you continue to b develop your art skill, you'll be less attached to the idea of uh, being 100% original in your work. Okay, wait, let's keep making brushes. So I like this. This is kind of an inker brush, but can it be improved? Hmm. The only thing I see an issue with is maybe it's like it fills weird. But do I even want this to be like a fill brush? Does it matter? Doesn't really matter. Um, Russian viewer asks, do you know how to model in 3D programs? I do not know how to model in 3D programs besides very rudimentary things. I am not a 3D artist. Also, you asked me earlier how old I was. I am 25. I tried 3D, but my computer hated me. <laughs> That's funny. So. Yeah, I just, it's such an investment of like time, man. But it saves you time. Like it depends on what you do, right? So if you're like an environment artist and you don't know 3D, like, dude, you're just, you're just leaving so much time on the table. It's not even about money. It's about time. Um, okay, yeah, I like this anchor. This anchor is cool. But what if I wanted like objective information? Like if I had a character and we can have like a super weird head, weird hair shape and weird scribbly expression or something. Yeah, let's say I work out some kind of gestural thing right let's say I work out some gestural thing and I want to be like I need clear information here would I be able to do that all right let's say there's like a strap goes across There's spikes going along. They're sunken. You see that they're sunken in. They come along the front as well. 25 turtles, 25 sardines. How do fish world people count birthdays? Candles on a cake. Oh, that's funny. I don't know if there are traditions translate to that kind of stuff and then we have like a some kind of thing here and we get a nice drop shadow Right? That's nice. 
Okay, this brush is decent for inking. I like it. I think it passes my my test for now. It's got a bit of an edge, but it's got solid blacks, which is nice. Boom, baby. Okay, sweet. Okay, let's see. Let's see. What, what are you guys saying here? All right, we're just vibing, dude. We're just vibing. Oh, sweet. Thanks for the pronunciation, Entropy. I appreciate that, man. For real. Okay, sweet. So we can save this. Now, when you're making brushes and you're doing all the shape dynamic stuff, you got to remember to save it and stuff because if you move to a different brush while you're doing this, it'll like not save and be super annoying and weird and you'll like lose it. But before we do that, we want to check out a couple ideas. Do we want a dual brush? I feel like dual brushing is cool. There's like this thing that happens. Let's try it. Yeah, let's go. All right, this is this is the brush, dude. This is the one. Show a bevel. Goes under. Yeah, this is this is cool. I like this. All right, inky brush, donezo. Let's go. So we gotta do new brush preset. We'll call it oval. Oval inker. We'll call it oval. Stinker inker. <laughs> um, include tool settings, yes, and no brush size and preset. Yucky. Okay, so there we go. Now we want to do one. So we've got our round oval shape, right? We'll just copy this over. I feel like we want even more of a soft edge. So I'm going to just experiment here because I don't know if I've ever tried to make a brush like this in this way. Oh, oh my gosh, of course. Give it a softer edge. Right, or I guess we could have just feathered the edge. You can do that, right? Okay. Get me out of here. Cool. Let's apply this layer mask here. Oh, oh damn. <laughs> I looked it up, but I'm not 100% trusting the Google Translator. Dude, Google Translate is like such a meme, man. I went to an international boarding school and like, the amount of Google Translate lore is kind of hilarious. Mm. Yeah, changing the brush does change the way you draw. That's a great distinction, Marco. Um, when I draw with an ink brush, I draw completely different subject matter than when I draw with a sketching brush. And vice versa, it's like you're sculpting with light and the strokes that you can make change the... Uh, change the decisions about the strokes that you do make right um Zella says did you get dreams i did get dreams i uh i briefly talked about it in the vod on the last stream but i felt like it was kind of bad to start the vod just dump dunking on dreams but i'll talk about it here dude dreams is so frustrating <laughs> the second i found out you couldn't export um 
as a gif i i just completely lost faith i was like you have got to be kidding me here this is unbelievable oh my gosh wait new patron let's go shout out to the new patron andreas you rule you're the best heck yeah new patron baby sweet if you guys want to support the uh the channel and the vibe you can you can join the patreon and you get access to the discord server for only three dollars you get the discord it's like an insane deal okay sweet based very cool very very cool Marcus says is there no lasso tool still no lasso tool Oh, for, for dreams? I don't even know, dude. Just the fact that you couldn't export as a GIF threw me off so much. I was like, what? How's that even possible? How do you not include <laughs> exporting as a GIF in your animation program, man? Unbelievable. It's just a very, like, weirdly limited in other areas and, like, a lot of bulk in other areas, like, randomly. I don't know. It's a, it's a really tough thing to build, but I feel like all they had to do was just make it what they had in Procreate a little more streamlined and they would have been fine. No lasso tool. Insane. Dreams crushed more like. It's so true. Oh, uh, man. I mean, they'll keep adding to it. They'll keep building it, right? Yeah, it is cool. I mean, I've been doing animatics with it, you know, when I have a like a minute like on the couch while I'm like watching a movie with my girlfriend or something, I'll like I'll just start like adding to this animatic. I've got like a little scene of like a little goblin walking through a forest and I'm just kind of building it out slowly. Okay, wait, we're doing something here. Oh yeah, we were doing this. So, wait, we didn't want to apply it. That was the whole point. Why did I do that? I wanted to delete it. Delete layer mask. Boom. Okay, now we're going to take our oval shape again, and we're going to say we want to feather it, right? So filter, selection, modify, feather, or something, right? Pixel radius, let's say 20. I don't even know. Okay, that did not do what I thought it was going to do. But you know what? It's It's fine. It's actually a sleigh. You know what we're going to do? We're going we're gonna to jankify this, dude. You guys don't even know how, how uh, fringe my methods are. You don't even know, man. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Boom, baby. So check this out. So we've got a blurred out blob here. Blurred out oval blob. Right? Could we see the animatic? Ah, oh, I don't have access to it. If I could export it as a GIF, I'd show you. <laughs> oh, man. Unbelievable. Okay, and then we do this again, if you guys remember. So you got to edit. I think it's, uh, what is it? Something brush. Define brush piece preset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, soft oval test. Let's just see if it works, first of all. So let's go to our sketchbook page. All right, we're going to look at, okay, soft oval test right now. seems like it does not do anything at all. Um, but let's keep trying some stuff. Hmm. Scattering, yeah, let's have it scatter. How about we make this brush scatter? This is a perfect, guys, this is my perfect character design sketch brush. Look, look how, look how good it is. Check me out. Look at this cool character design I'm about to do. He's got a hat. Right? And he's got glasses. Narratively, this implies the character is thoughtful. As much as we don't like stereotypes, they do work. But he's a sneaky guy because he has a curly mustache. Look at that. And he's evil because he has a goatee. There you go. Boom. 
And here you have it, our epic character design. Um, all right, maybe we don't want scattering. Just a thought, just a thought, just a thought. Cool, cool, cool. All right, let's get jiggy with it. Actually, let's 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 funkify this this business. Let's let's add some noise. Make it all weird. Right? I kind of just want to make this weird and just see what happens. Let's do black and white because I think that matters. I'm pretty sure that matters. Make it 4 400%. Make it super confusing. And we will merge these. And we'll try this one. It's a new brush preset. Let's see. Define brush preset weird oval all right let's try the weird whoa okay that's kind of cool all right let's try the weird oval so okay one of the issues immediately is uh the depth issue again we got to lower the depth because there's natural texture in right oh wait we want to change the texture we want a different texture yeah here we go here we go All right, so already we get like a toothy texture here. This is nice. This is a nice kind of pencil-y texture. We like it, we like it, we dig it. Boom, boom, boom. I wonder what's going on here. All right, so this is more of a sketchy vibe. I want to say like maybe we want, I don't know, wet edges. Is that like a thing we want? No, it's not. Build up? No, that's weird. Noise? No, not noise. Transfer? Ooh. Yeah, baby. That's all it took. Tran just a little bit of transfer. Boom. Look at that. Instantly, sketch brush, epic. All right, let's change some other stuff too. So we've got depth, but now that we have transfer in, transfer does stuff, right? With opacity and whatnot. So, so, shape dynamics. Okay, we want pen pressure, minimum flip note. I crushed in flip note. Amazing. Um, toothy texture, inky brushes. Um, Russian name asks, do you have a job? <laughs> yeah, right now I'm, I'm mentoring students. But um, I take freelance character design mostly. I've done work for animation, for games, mostly blue sky work, early concept, story-based stuff. It's really fun. I love it. Industry is kind of slow right now, but also I just needed a break, man. I needed a break. Figure out who I am again, you know? But yeah, right now I stream and, I, and, I'm, and I'm teaching as well. So impressive. Artists are able to create TV stuff. You can see where this is even. True, true. Amy Thompson stuff, for example. Yeah, dude, Amy Thompson's so good. All right, so we like to transfer. Oh, okay, great, great, great. Okay, okay. So we can, we can, um, change the transfer thing. So that's good. So we want to increase the minimum pressure opacity to be like forty percent, I think. Let's see. So the idea is we want something that we can block in a a character's head with like super loose right honestly i kind of want like a nicholas cole-esque sketchy brush that's what i like that's what i like oh keegan's here let's go um amazing amazing entropy says was <laughs> um we have two accounts oh sick 
This job is making us able to get one. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, it's true. That's actually true. You guys are identity thieving each other in the chat. Nice. Nice. Tazu multiverse. That's deep. <laughs> You'll never know. You guys will never know. It'll be a, a trade secret forever. Yeah, so we do want it to be... This. Flow jitter? Okay, mitten. No, we're going to say off. Why can't I do wetness? Do I have to turn this on? No. Okay, no wetness. Maybe we'll dual brush it as well. Go with a more oily vibe. Maybe. I think that changes something, right? Maybe. We're a sketchy guy. Okay, interesting. So yeah, not exactly the desired look we want for the brush. Kind of lost it a little bit. So let's let's go back a bit, see what we change. Let's go back to texture, I think. I think we want less texture here. Not that much though. Hmm. Depth jitter. Oh, we had that off. Oh, okay. And let's say minimum depth. Yeah, we want it to be a little higher, I think. I think scale, we want the scale to be much smaller. We want it to be very, very fine texture, like very fine. Okay, we're getting there. We're shooting there. Let's go. Okay, sweet. Sweet, 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 sweet. So we got this. Boom, 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 boom. It's starting to feel really nice, I think. And broad daylight. Yo, Keanu's back. What up, Keanu? Long time no see, buddy. <laughs> Yo, Michael. Brush stream, let's go. Yeah, dude. It is brush stream. That's what's up. Michael's Qui Gon. <laughs> That's funny. Shape dynamics. Okay, we want the minimum to be smaller. We want it to be like just honestly zero. Let's let's try. Nice. Okay, so now we can go big. So like let's say we're sketching out a guy and we're like, all right, this and that, and we want the the eye to be here, and we want this one to be on this side, and we want this eye to be here. Right? We want the ability to sketch really loosely. Nice oval shape. This one, okay, this one doesn't have tilt yet. So we can decide if we want tilt. This is starting to feel nice though, right? For, for like a sketch brush. Yeah, making brushes is not that hard, guys. You can do it too if you if you really want to. Okay, the overlap doesn't look bad either, so that's fine. I was just helping a student with a creature design and now I want to do a bat for some reason. Like a little bat friend. Or like a little guy. Maybe he's got little teeth. <laughs> That's kind of cute, right? He's got little hands maybe, who knows? Who's to say, truly? Um, Tazzy says, Gabriel, I don't know if you know about my brush making addiction, but watching you make brushes is like an alcoholic watching someone chug. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> um, Keanu says, I missed your stream a lot. Dude, I missed you in my stream a lot, buddy. Glad to have you back. Um, <laughs> making brushes is fun. 
two times in a row. I made it. Let's go. Let's go, Mixer. Mixer. Let's go. Don't forget about the brushes. <sighs> now you can draw good boys. It's true. Keegan says, brushes on the brain. I tried Gabriel's pack yesterday for the first time, and it went so hard. Yo, let's go. Yeah, it's a good one. Definitely a good one. We love it. We love it. Oh my gosh, it's so cold in New York right now. It snowed today at 9 a.m. It snowed. <laughs> really looking forward to being in L.A. next week. My God, that'll be nice. Or week after next week, rather. That'll be great. Very cool time. Okay, so one thing I'm noticing with this brush, we're trying it out, we get these big thick lines, but when we're sketching lightly, which I like, I like sketching really lightly with this brush, what I'm noticing is you get these really crisp, interesting lines as well. So let's try this out maybe in a different context because I'm really liking this brush here. So let's say we have a character. We want the shapes to be a really big part of the design, so we'll block in some weird macro shapes here. Right, some really weird, strange, big elements happening, right? It's kind of building out form in a weird way. I understand how I draw is sometimes kind of weird, but hey, we all find our method for dynamic proportions and whatnot. This is a very fantasy-esque, weird guy. I am really enjoying this. Oh my gosh, look how, wow, this is so cool. Whoa. Okay, I like this. I like this brush a lot. This might be a new winner brush for me, potentially. This is so cool. All right, let's see what you guys are saying. I can stream for about another maybe, maybe 40 minutes, I think. Who knows? All right, let's check this chat here. Hmm. That one brush feels like fun sketch mix with the HB one. Exactly. You're understanding. You get it. Michelangelo says, may I ask how you hold your pen? For digital, I hold my pen, you know, standard pen holding like this I try to hold it very loose if possible sometimes if I need to uh, if I need to like switch it up or give my wrist a break or something I'll switch to being in between these two or sometimes even in the middle like this sometimes if I want to if like for instance this is how I would be if I really wanted to get some some like gestural lines down use my whole arm not get caught up hard with the digital brushes though Yeah, like I'll hold it like between the two, like this kind of vibe. That kind of works sometimes. To engage your whole arm, you have less access to your wrist, so you're going to get more dynamic lines here and there. But that's like very seldom I'll actually draw like that. Mostly it's just the, the uh, expected way for digital. Ian McKaig lore? Oh, dude, Ian McKaig is my idol, man. That's my, he's my, he's my guy. I'm going to continue to try and be his mentee. I'm going to just keep trying. 
again and again and again. All right, I'm really liking this brush. I think as long as I actually keep my shapes dynamic, this brush is like pretty darn good, right? So as you guys can see, going from just a regular oval shape that we kind of had a, added a slightly soft edge to, adding some texture in, texture that we made, and then some standard shape business. Now the question is for shape dynamics, do we want to include tilt? Is that something we want to do? That's a tough one. Oh, I think there's like multiple stylistic approaches you could do with a brush like this. Yeah, I like that a lot. All right, let's try it with some tilt. Let's see. Let's see. Penlar, Penlar. <laughs> nice. The secret technique. Ian McKay is Yoda. It's true. Zell said, it's interesting how you can have so much more range of motion holding a pencil than a digital stylus. Yeah, it's true. It's rough. Rough. Rough, 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 rough. Burger shape. You need to do... You need to do brush rehab. No. <laughs> no. All these years in digital and still can't completely be as precise and dynamic as traditional i don't know if you ever can man i don't know if you ever can i mean part of that is texture actually like the texture of the paper helps to guide your hand like it helps you have better control there are some solves like you know that's why some people like cintiqs is because they have a little bit of texture like a slight texture but once the oil build up from your hand gets on there it's kind of you know you wear that down also just with time you wear down that texture and that's why Intuos tablets are actually pretty good, like those pen, regular pen tablets, if you can get some texture on them, which the, the Wacom ones have the texture. Uh, some other brands do as well. You can always do the Cynics mode and just like literally tape a piece of paper to it. That's like a method that works, but that is up to you. Mm, ah, man, I might do some beginner tutorials, guys. I don't know. Because if there's people who are going to, like, be here and, like, they want to know stuff, you know, I don't know. I don't know. What kind of tutorials do you guys want to see if I were to do any? What would you be like, oh, I want to hear Gabriel talk about that. What would it be? <laughs> Among Us brush. No. Oh yeah, the iPad texture, dude. I, I just uh, I just got the paper. Like, dude, I couldn't do glass on the iPad. Great little tablet, eighty buck tablet. Yeah, no, it's great. It's great, 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 great. How to draw a dog? <laughs> Hands. Okay. <laughs> Uh, your approach to shape design would be interesting. 
Okay. 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 So shape design. Shape design also, uh, we got hands as well. Hands, what else, what else? Dynamic fabric, oh, okay. A fabric tutorial. It's not my best skill even doing costume fabric design fabric slash costume I mean I love costume but you know like everyone my folds need works for sure my folds need work um let's see okay shape design is the winner here uh shape tutorial elusive topic would love to hear your insight it is an elusive topic it's so hard to teach I've been <laughs> I've been like inching towards teaching shape design like you know, there's a lot of vocabulary with shape design. You got to have included there. Um, and no one gives satisfying answers. And the best you'll get is like, well, it has to do with appeal. Which is like, you know, true, I guess. But yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about shape design. So shape design seems to be the clear winner here. <laughs> not a master rhythm and movement yeah exactly rhythm and movement is a facet of shape design for sure so we can talk about that too okay cool 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 uh one thing to get you guys started um in this world of of shape design is you guys should check out this lecture by Iris Muddy. She is, she's one of uh, my incredible mentors for sure. Um, and she made a video called Understanding Appeal. It was a lecture for Lightbox. And then, um, it's just up for free on YouTube. So watch that lecture. Watch it and then watch it again and then watch it again and then watch it again. All right, this sketch brush is honestly based. I love it. I love it a lot. The only thing is when it's like thin like this, I'm feeling like, uh, well, when would we use the thickness here? When would we need that? If we were designing a character and we were like, oh, you know, and, and, and here they are, they're, they're standing and they've got this big epic cape behind them. Then we need to create like a big shadow here and I say like okay I'll I'll fill in this shadow with this big shape mm, not really if I needed to like solidify or this is more for gesture I guess this this line here how it would go really dark hmm still figuring it out who knows ba -ba 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 -bam. Keanu says big medium small is the only thing I know about shapes Zella says same thing or is that composition well shape design is part of composition um and composition requires shape design and big medium small spans both you, big medium small is like a truth it's like a weird appeal truth but we can talk about big medium small too um Cool, 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 cool. Iris has a channel. She does have a channel. Ben Atta says, hello, Gabriel. I have started doing drawings today, like right today. Paper here is very expensive, so I want to learn drawing on a digital tablet, Samsung tablet. Where do I begin? Oh, interesting. I mean, if you have, do you have the tablet? Or, like, is it something you want to acquire, right? Yo, I love our homie who's, like, just saying, like, coca-cola rock and stone i'm not 100 percent sure what we're dealing with here but hey I'm, I'm here for it let's go um 
says is the timestamp necessary oh was it timestamped oh it was timestamp is not necessary start from the beginning don't watch it from my timestamp oops um let's see where do you begin i already have the tablet okay so there's one called there's one called oh what's it called it's a drawing software called let me see let me see uh infinite painter so infinite painter is i personally think i think it's the best one infinite painter for for um stuff that's not um for apple because procreate's not on, not for on samsung infinite painter is i think maybe clip studio paint but i don't know how well optimized it is but infinite painter is a great way to start and it's super easy and intuitive and cool Krita. You can get Krita on Android? Um, but yeah, that's a good one. And in terms of like where to begin, just just uh, just pop off. Pop off, man. Just draw every day. Stuff you know, stuff from observation, things you like. Just draw, dude. Oh, dude, if you can get Krita on Android, then definitely go for Krita. Krita is really cool. Okay, sweet. So this is good to know. Thank you guys for engaging in this survey. <laughs> so I'll save that for later. All right, we've got all these elements here. We've got some sketchy sketch. Now, can this brush be improved? That's the thing is that we've we've edited this. Maybe we'll save this as one version, right? So we'll do brush preset. We'll do weird oval. It's not weird anymore. It's kind of a like a sleigh oval. It's kind of what's going on there. But let's continue to push it, right? So maybe the shape dynamics, we... Hmm, let's see, let's see. We want angle jitter, yes, for pen tilt. So tilt is going to change our jitter now. So we can get nice, clean lines either way. Right? Sweet, so we get a flat line here. awesome the fill is kind of weird but I feel like this isn't really a fill-in kind of brush this is very much a line brush yeah this is like the kind of sketching I do with these kind of brushes like very flowy loose stuff We love bearded men with hair flowing back and a beard flowing forward. It's a proven concept, you know? It just is. It just is. All right, let's check the lighting. Is this like super dystopian in here or are we good? No, I think we're good. I think we're good. I, th I think we're good. Um, <laughs> let's see what you guys are saying. Let's see. Infinite Painter is a good alternative for Procreate. It's true. It's true. It is a good alternative. Um, I'm unsure if Affinity works for Android, maybe like uh, Windows, Mac, and iPad OS. Yeah, dude. There's so like, unfortunately for Android, there's like so few creative softwares that are like actually usable. It's it's like, almost impossible to optimize for Android because you're optimizing for like every piece of hardware that uses Android. Whereas if you optimize for Apple, you're optimizing for like one set of hardware that they guarantee optimization and they like guarantee usability for their devices for like i think six years or something so like it's a it's a long life for devices and you are you're optimizing for the newer and the older it's like way easier um i use sketchbook on my android phone nice 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 real gandalf core so true Hmm. 
So yeah, I like this a lot. This is nice. And we still have some edges if we need edges in our sketch, you know, like some hard edges to like imply light or something, you know? Okay, cool. Cool, 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 cool. So I like this. I especially like the more thin line shapey sketches though we were working on. Um, let's see, let's try some more of those, I think. Let's get just a fresh page and see. So we saved one. The thing is, even using it super far away, like sometimes with uh, thin brushes from far away, it feels a little weird. But honestly, uh, with this one, even from far away, it feels really, really nice. Like I don't feel weird. So let's try this little shape again of like this little fairy character. Man, I wish I could just do compositions for Magic the Gathering cards. Like I don't I don't want to paint it. I just want to do the composition. You know what I mean? This is a fun little drawing of this little fairy character. Cool, cool. Yeah, this feels really good to draw with. Ooh, this is this is honestly crispy. This is a crispy Mmm, not even crispy. This is like, uh, maybe silky is the right word. Hmm. Hmm. Frog fingers, dude. I will take any excuse to draw frog fingers. They're just cool. Crispy brush? Exactly. Exactly, Marco. Crispy brush. Nice.
Sick. Super funky composition too. I like this though. So we're just gonna mess with our lines a little bit because like, you know, sometimes you need to do some weird proportions for your characters. Sometimes you need like little arms and giant hands, you know? Sometimes that's just what you need in your life. Let's change it. So you like this cool flow gesture going up. Nice. Frog elf. Yeah, pretty much that's what we're doing here. We're doing a little frog elf here. It's kind of just what's up. Guys, I got to do another draw this in your style, man. Haven't done one in far too long. I think I just, I don't know, like I feel like I've been doing so much growth in my own style and my own way of working and figuring out the next step for me, you know, wanting to move more towards like AAA title games or like high level indie games and you know I feel like I don't know it's almost like I'm hesitant to decide on like a finishing a finished style for my work a little bit of hesitancy there like I don't want to make the wrong decision or like do some choose something that out of like self that I end up regretting committing to because like I've done that before don't want to do it again But that fear is like super, super holding me back from taking that next step, you know? Swing. So we could do that pose or we could have it coming forward. And why do we need this head? I just like this. This is much better. Right? Oh, Z Band's here. Welcome, Z Band. Let's go. Um, Gecko Fingers. Keanu says, Are you a fan of community? Abed usually says that. I am a fan of community, but what are you referring to? What did I say? Was it crispy? Crispy. Maybe. Um, so says, I watched a video on the hype cycle, and apparently that was one of the causes the game companies had a lot of layoffs the hype cycle and apparently one of the causes the game companies had oh maybe i honestly dude i'm i'm like game companies have layoffs and yeah it's it's mm, like the general talk of how the industry is going it's like you got to be careful about what you let deter you you know because if you're making decisions about like whether or not you should go into a field because of like logical reasons or, or seemingly logical reasons, like there's layoffs, there's this, there's that, then it's like, dude, that's every every single moment in time, there's gonna be enough reasons for you not to pursue art, you know? But people still do, people still get into it, you know, these companies need to hire somebody, so make sure that you can do really good ideas and they'll hire you. But it's really about the ideas, man. <laughs> oh my gosh. I gotta make sure this is <laughs> one sec. <laughs> one sec. Okay, I don't hundred percent okay okay um paces there's some super fun hands they do have so much character oh bro it's all in the hand the head in the hands man head in the hands are where it's at um nav says about that fear i think we never know if something is suited for us if we don't try it out i mean what do you have to lose very true keegan says heading out now good luck with the brush crafting dude thank you 
take care of Keegan. Um, Keanu says, cool, 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 cool. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a hundred percent, hundred percent from community for sure. Cool. 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 Um, Satoru Go Gojo says, hello, my friend recommended you to me. Can you say hi to Cuca Beludo Branco? Cuca Beludo Branco. Are you Portuguese? Portuguese. Futebol to Brazil. Brazil. Tudo bem. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I'm down. I'm down with the with the Brazilians. That's right. Futebol to Brazil. <laughs> Uh, dude, shout out to all my Brazilian homies right now. I've got one Brazilian Brazilian homies. That's what's up. All right, let's do like a fun pose for this character. I kind of want to like make them all zippy, like in a little zone or something. I don't know. Um... Pace is right. I tend to be drawn more to things where it seems like the artist writers team had a lot more creative freedom. Oh yeah, dude. Like that's why indie games are so good, man. Or there are AAA games where they have a lot of cool freedom and like you can really tell that like it's such a cool project. Like, you know, even if even if it's kind of basic or or whatever, like Horizon Zero Dawn, the ideas are so fun in that game. You know, even if it's like a little vanilla for your taste. It's so fun. I finally got out of the box. <laughs> Hands give me frog vibes. Oh yeah, we're doing frog hands, baby. Frog hands. We could also do it so it's like they're swinging forward. They're on like a branch or something. That could be funny. Mm, or maybe their heads forward, but they are still coming forward as well. Yeah, I feel like they're like causing a plant to grow or something. Like that's the vibe I get. They're using some kind of magic here. Right. I like weird fairy creatures that also have like weird wings at their like hip as well. It's kind of cool. It's almost bug like in nature. Oh, this is fun. This is a fun gesture. Right, this is pretty fun. Yo, take care, Entropy, dude, and welcome to the community. Yeah, super push gesture. It's like the feet are rooted here, right? Yeah, I love this brush. Although as I zoom out and I'm sketching, I'm noticing myself using like these darker lines and becoming more messy. So let's just adjust for that, right? We were figuring out the gesture, but now that we know the gesture, we can get, come back in with a softer 
softer disposition, a little bit of a softer line quality. Try this again. So with feet like this, usually like that, this leading line is pretty clean all the way down. And you'll see the back foot like curl up to, because otherwise it would be like this. So you can think of it like a hinge. If this goes down, then the heel goes up. And it's pressed down on the ball of the foot and these like initial toes here. Um, cool, cool, cool. Keanu says, I feel like you're at a point where you can draw anything you want. Where do you go from here? Uh, and is, is true what they, the last 10% of learning is the hardest. Oh yeah. I mean, um, depends on what that 10% is, right? It's like with drawing, hmm, how do I put this? All right. I'm about to give you some forbidden knowledge, brother straight up straight up some forbidden knowledge dude this is how you can think about it right so art and drum whoa what is this It's a pretty fun, pretty fun gesture. We can have a little swoo, little fairies flowing around and flying, flying across, up and through and around and across. We can do some fun little creatures or something flying all around. But yeah, so with art, man, art is like, drawing is like this, dude. So drawing, a drawing, it's working backwards from a concept, right? So like that concept could be any stack of information, right? So it could be like like uh, information about, so we're just gonna say the concept is built on top of like information, right? That information can be conceptual, literal and then a subsection of that is like with the literal side of things you know is it like literal light literal literal form based on our world and a subset of that is like anatomy right so anatomy isn't part of drawing anatomy is part of what you draw which is a subset of literal information based on form based on our our world so like when you say in the chat, like I feel like you're at a point where you can draw anything you want, my drawing capacity, the actual motor skill of drawing, I've advanced over many years to where I'm putting down lines. I have a lot of carved neural pathways in my brain, my big old brain. A lot of, a lot of weird fully squiggly bits in my brain and here are my eyeballs also. connected to that brain so like you know I've got a I've got a lot of muscle memory that's been carved into my brain um, so like for me putting lines down right I can be like okay I want to correctly put down a cylinder and when I draw the cylinder I put it down pretty correctly this is a pretty correct cylinder this is freehand no smoothing right it's not 100% correct but it's pretty correct so like um, when we're talking about you can draw anything you want, you can already draw anything you want. 
but your motor skills may not be as developed. So when you're putting down lines, you're like, all right, I want to do a cylinder. It could look, you know, a little worse. So it's not actually reflecting the information that you know is true, but it's still a drawing, right? So once you get to a point where, and this is what you're talking about, your capacity to draw, like whatever it is when it comes to like weird funky characters with big mustaches and tiny bug eyes and, you know, thin eyebrows and, you know, they're, they're holding a, an axe in one hand and the axe is coming towards you in perspective and, you know, it's like, and this and one is going away in perspective and it's going, you know, like if you're in this big, wow, swing, you know, composition, like if, if you can just draw that stuff, it's less about the fact that you can do it and more like, why are you doing it? And this comes up a lot of like w the the question of why, why draw? Um, and then we get back to the information. So the answer to this question is here within the concept. So this is actually the basis of the character design course that I do. <laughs> and the people who are in the course or in the chat can tell you <laughs> how how much is here and how this really needs to follow this. So like for you as an artist thinking about where you want to go from here getting here is hard because it's a lot of practice you got to be like all right form gesture so you can you know how to put the rib cage down at a perspective where you're looking up at a character and and the shoulder blades are coming back and then they're coming towards you in space and the arms are coming towards you in space and it's hyper perspective because actually you know and these are the bones of the fingers because actually it's a crazy lens and as it goes down you know the the hips are huge too and they go off in this direction and and actually the head is super tiny and and then you know the femur comes and it's like wow it becomes like skyscraper you know what i mean like so if you have that kind of uh information of like how perspective works how whatever works so it's like your drawing is able to reflect the reality that you're going for or the information that supports your idea then you're thinking about the idea and then that's where you think about story so for instance with this character it's like he's focused right he is elegant you know standing with a very unique and interesting posture so he's like very and he's a fairy so it works right um but we've also given him kind of like goofy hands goofy kind of frog hand so it's like got this extra level of almost comedy to it um and there's something that he's doing that's important right and the gesture is this upward emotion but it's also downward but the way his hand is moving is it's it's an effortless gesture he's like oh yes like he's done it a million times before we can tell that there's muscle memory for him right and that's part of his story that's part of the concept and that's part of you know what and why we draw is to include that kind of information so it's like I can draw whatever I want, sort of, if I'm interested in it and if it's something I'm familiar with. But, but yeah, man, where do you go? Where do you go from being able to draw whatever you want? You go anywhere. That's the whole point. Now you can do alchemy. Now you can do magic. Now you can create whatever you desire. And then you ask the question, what is story? Why do people make art from the beginning of time to now? And now, now, now you're starting to think, right? And if you're having difficulty staying motivated on why you should train certain technical skills and why you should advance your your capacity to bring your characters into a reality where they're acting, they're thoughtful, they have a purpose, it's obvious in the drawing. If you're losing motivation for that, then um, you need to go back to story. And once you have the story down, that will motivate you more than you ever will know to go back and practice the fundamentals. Like now that I have a very clear idea of what I want to do in terms of like being of service to the world with my art. Um, now it's kind of like, okay, time to, time to like actually go back and learn like for real color theory, for real the physics of light. Not just like, I know what uh, shadows are. It's like, I need to know the physics of light, man. Because if you need it for a character to make sense, if you need it for a narrative moment and it's important and it helps you sell the story, then knowing it is essential. And also to be able to simplify it. It's fun, right? Um, but let's see the narrative implication change of this character if we make some changes to the anatomy. So we gave him these kind of goofy frog fingies, but let's change it. No more frog fingies. We have the same curvature towards the end because all fingers have that. They have that curve curve up point. 
which hello hello my camera's too good it keeps focus too well now let's change the gesture of the fingies turn it into a claw Twing. here as well here too this as well Twing. same shape language same aesthetic same sense of design but completely different execution and concept Schwing. Now our idea about this character is completely different, right? Actually, with this one, we would change the thing to be more... Yeah, very different vibe from this character now. almost Edward Scissorhands-esque. And here we'd want to give maybe a sharper nose to be in tune. Maybe show a little bit more like deviousness potentially. But now the whole energy of this piece changes based on that one change of aesthetic, right? Um, hmm. Let's see, let's see. Oh, dude. So glad that the way you guys think about drawing has changed. That's epic. Zilla says, I love being art that tells a story. Pretty art can get boring after a while, even though I still like it. Dude, so true. Wildcard says, do you think there are design principles we don't know slash haven't discovered yet? Big, medium, small, but ones we don't know about yet. Oh, for sure. So many, dude. There's so many. How do they even discover design principles in the first place? Uh, Zell says, probably from the sheer number of years people have made art, they eventually figured it out. Impossible to hold spoons, this poor character. <laughs> so that's a good question. Where did they come up with this design terminology? Well, it's interesting because I was talking to my grandfather, who is an art director um, at Jim Henson Studio, working with Muppets. And when I was talking with him about my work, and it's interesting because once I hit a certain level of design, level like my quality he could finally start sharing certain wisdom with me which he couldn't do before he would kind of just be like keep drawing gabriel keep drawing but he couldn't share anything with me because it wouldn't have made any sense um so like now that we have a much different relationship and he's able to share these really rich concepts with me you know sometimes i bring this stuff up i'm like yeah i'm really working on you know uh diversifying my shape design and he was like shape design like what are you talking about like, what even is that and it's like that wasn't even a term when he was working as a professional, you know, 50 years ago, 40 years ago, like no one was saying shape design. That wasn't like a thing. It's like a new term and like a terminology. And who knows if it'll stand the test of time in the future. It could rise and fall. You know, we don't use the term chiaroscuro anymore. We don't use it at all. You know, I mean, some people know it, niche people, people who like are art history people or like photographers or whatever. Photographers. <laughs> Imagine being a photographer. <laughs> I'm going to be honest <laughs> Imagine being a photographer. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, but, um, <laughs> dude, I was an event photographer for like a year, I think. For like a summer, that was like my gig, dude. I took a lot of photos. Um, yeah, but yeah, so like, um, for instance, if I were to draw out some shapes for you, for instance, like if I were to say like, hey, check, check this out, you know, in terms of like planes, this hand facing this direction, right? Check this out. This this plane here is reflected with this plane here. So it's almost like the same side of things that you're seeing, which is also the same side in which you're seeing the front of the character. So like that matters, like what is facing this direction? If I were to lay down light, that would matter. If this hand was facing towards us and this hand was facing away from us or like perfectly to the side and not showing this splayed bit here, we would be relating to the space in a different way. 
that means a lot for composition, gesture, character, character narrative, all that stuff. How a character is turned in or out matters a lot. So even paying attention to the planes that certain things are facing or creating matters. Everything matters, but it's like, what level are you thinking? Um, what level of design thinking are you engaging in when you're working? You know, because when you're still developing this drawing, you're like, you're spending so much time and focus trying to get the drawing right. You don't have any space left in your head to think about other element design elements. So solving this, it's like every, everyone is saying to new artists, train the fundamentals, train the fundamentals, train the fundamentals, please train the fundamentals. Because the longer you stay stuck at the, I can't even draw phase, the longer it'll take you to get to the considering the real incredible intricacies of composition and design, right? So there's that element, but there's a lot of design principles that you don't know about, you know, there's a lot of design principles I don't know about, but the terminology we use, I think is very misleading, especially shape design. Shape design is one of the most misleading terms ever because so much fits within shape design and uh, it doesn't imply any of the facets of what it encapsulates. And so people are like, oh, shapes. So spiky shape means danger. And round shape means safe and square shape means strong. Okay, now that I know that, I have everything that I need to create a fantasy character. Absolutely not, dude. Not even close. Get out of here. Um, Keanu says that made perfect sense. It was kind of what I wanted to hear. Thank you. <laughs> I got you, buddy. I'll tell you what you want to hear if it's the truth. So let's see, let's see, let's see. Zell said, when I learned specular reflection, it made me so much, it made me so much more f since for rendering. Yeah, specular reflection, stuff like that. Like, dude, there's so many things, man. Even, you know, I was working with a student yesterday and like adding an atmospheric perspective to their painting. All I did was go in with a soft brush. I wouldn't show their work, but it was like, when I did that, they were like, oh my gosh, because it's, you know, they're finally seeing their idea, what they had and what they wanted to do. They're seeing it on the page. They just didn't have that fundamental piece to slot in there and um, bring it into the reality that their desired reality, you know? But yeah. Okay, cool, 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 cool. So I hope that answered that question. Any more, any more questions, guys? I'm just kind of, oh, mm. oh, <laughs> I should go soon. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> oh i checked the time well we made two brushes that's pretty good three i mean technically now that we're trying this one out with the tilt right and i think this drawing is pretty good it's a pretty fun drawing i think the only thing we're missing is like uh the clear kind of consolidation of these shapes you know like we want this to flow and for this to feel like it's leading into one shape i don't know why i kind of want that to be the case like everything is flowing into this point That even the wing is as well and even this wing is curving in a little bit or something no the outward wing there works it's pretty fun one leg forward hmm One leg back. Hmm. For now, we can keep it pretty mirrored. I like the weird simplicity of the silhouette. Mm -hmm. I think I'll clip out that section of that discussion and drop it in the Patreon or something as like a little clip. Um, oh, what up, Grim? Let's go. Candace says, does shape design get to a point where it becomes borderline conspiracy theory, like collect connecting dots that aren't there? A little bit, a little bit. It's like a little bit algebra, like you have to invent stuff to solve it, you know? <laughs> 
Wildcard says, how long did it take you to train your drawing sense to the point where you felt comfortable focusing on design? I think I always wanted to focus on design and I begrudgingly trained every time. So for me, so this is actually an interesting thing. Um, I think that people fall into kind of two categories of motivation if they want to get good. So there's like the technical and the fun, then the theoretical, right? Technical. And then like the theory, this is take this with a grain of salt. This is the saltiest of the, of, of grains on this one guys for real. So like for me, I always thought of it like technical and the theory side, right? So your ability to draw and your, your, knowledge of what you're drawing why you're drawing all that stuff design design is here blah, 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 and here it's all the technical stuff like like rendering form perspective blah, 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 all that stuff right so and just like mileage so being able to just do it right one sec so for me, it started off as a technical venture. Actually, no, I started just, I wanted to do like knights and dragons and cool stuff. So it started with the conceptual idea and the technical for me always followed the conceptual jump. Anytime I wanted to do more, the technical would follow, right? But it was in adventuring out into new strange ideas that the technical would have to lag behind and justify and support, you know? And for me, it got to a point where on the theory side of things, I knew, I was like, damn, if I want to bump up to this next level, I know there's actually a block in my theory knowledge and I have to excel with my technicalities past a certain point. It's like th the key was here and like the lock was here. That's how I thought about it, right? So I had to be like, okay, I got to go back and really study light, form, perspective, all that stuff and like sketch in cafes and draw the space I'm in and all that stuff. Um, and then, you know, I would push through, I'd do life drawing class when I was at art school, all that stuff, really, really push up to finally I could unlock this and get to the next level. I feel like the past couple of years for me have been a real after a breakthrough. It's kind of like you're, you're tunneling out from underground and you finally get to like a vista and now you can just do stuff in the world, right? And like the world is like the, ma the magical world that is being able to draw well. Um, and everybody covets that skill, man. Everybody wants that skill to be able to draw well and to bring their ideas to life, right? Um, so, hmm, damn. Now you guys got all the questions after we got to this point. <laughs> but yeah, so for me, like, um, the technical always followed the interest of like what I wanted to draw. Um, so now I feel like I have the drawing skills and my ideas. Sometimes I feel like they're just out, out of my own consciousness. Like this, I didn't think about anything when I drew this fairy guy. It's just pure instinct, right? Because it's like a lot of like my aesthetic and, you know, like just that other stuff, the shapes kind of push you in a certain direction and everything like that. But it's like, that mileage really brought me to this point, you know? Um, but let's check out the questions you guys have. But the inverse, the opposite, where the technical, like you want to get good at art and rendering and painting, like that was never me, man. But if you want to get good at the rendering and the technical aspect to it, at a certain point, you're going to have to address the ideas and theory because it's the, it's the opposite, right? At a certain point, people I see, people who like do the studies route and they only do studies, they hit a wall where they don't want to do studies anymore. They don't want to do studies and they don't want to do practice. They don't want to train anatomy. They don't want to do anything because they don't have a reason to. There's no motivation. So training and story and theory, breaking through that barrier will give you the motivation to continue to push, right? To get to this, to this place, this cool vista place. That's my little breakdown. I don't know if that made sense. Grain of salt also, guys. Grain of salt. Grain of salt. The saltiest sea there is. Swim in it for, for this. Um, okay, so. Wildcard says, how long did it take you to train your drawing sense to a point you felt comfortable focusing on design? Yeah, I was always focusing on design. Kiana says, that's a mastery level. You'll know when you have it. Um, I think yes and no. Like, you know when you have, it's like, it's always stages. And you're like, 
now I can do this. Cool. But they, you can't do other stuff. Like, it's interesting. Paige says, that is honestly the part when it gets fun, though. I see how I can fist this. It's less overwhelming. Um, yeah, fair. Fair, 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 fair. Problem solving. Dark Renaissance says, what is your advice on expanding your visual library faster? Um, I mean, drawing from reference is good, I think. And also just pay attention to what you like. Like, I feel like people feel like a visual library is something they have to have. That's like a million different things, right? Um, but follow your interest. Your interest will guide you towards many other things. And, and like, uh, you know, for instance, for me, like logged in my brain, like I have a lot of sword shapes in my brain from like historical weapons and like sabers and, and, you know, and, and how they hang on the body and the, you know, the spadone sword from like late Italy that has little flangey bits here and it's super long and it's, I know the war purpose of it because I know the history of it. I think visual library goes hand in hand with just intrigue, interest, um, goes hand in hand with like learning history as well and just engaging in the world that you're in. To be an artist is to be infinitely curious about what is and what could be, right? In my opinion. But um, yeah, just follow your interest, man, and your visual library will, will build naturally from that, I think. That's a great way to start. Also, if you need to practice something, if you like need to push and, and learn some new stuff or an idea, then reference, but buddy, reference. Reference, reference. But like think like an engineer with your reference. Like think about how this works, right? Wild card. I feel like I'm able to draw large forms well, basic forms, but I have a hard time maintaining a 3D sense when doing smaller parts. How do you learn to keep form even in smaller details? That's the question. You're probably focusing on details as symbols. So like if, if you, for instance, have a big shape that's like a shoulder plate, right? Let's just say we have a weird shoulder plate pancake shape. And uh, this is like the bevel where the light would change and blah, 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 blah. And you're like, okay, but I need some rivets. You'll go, all right, the rivet would be here and it has two edges and the other one would be here and it has two edges. But it's like maybe, or you don't do it that way. You do like, you do like, yeah, and there's rivets here and there's a rivet here and there's a rivet here. And you're kind of drawing a symbol for what you think it is rather than drawing the actual true information, which you'd see the top right? Because we know the form goes, wraps around like this for the shape. So you drop the ellipse on that shape and wherever the secondary bevel is or like where it turns the edge, right? You know that that's another area that you need to define an edge. And then here it would be different because it curves in. So the ellipse would be here. It would be out more like that. Boom. And here, if it's facing forward, wrapping forward, then you'd see like a double one. So it's like, maintaining detail on forms that are moving and changing um yeah just like pay attention to oh gosh i guess don't get lost in symbols right because like uh people get really lost in symbols like if they draw a head from far away and they're like yep yep and the head and the the hair is goes goes back and this and that and then he has he has a he has an eyeball and an eyebrow i mean this actually looks fine oops but like you draw like a symbol for what you think it is rather than actually drawing in the actual form shape because really in reality if you want to communicate reality it could just be a collection of like strange shadows and a crease a creased eye where you're just glinting the light a little bit of the hair there, you know, that could be the actual squinted true information of that pose. Right. Rather than focusing on just like symbols of what you think an eye is, you know, rather than going with like, Oh, and it's an eyeball, that kind of stuff helps for sure. Wildcard says, yeah, I think it's probably the symbolic part. I've been trying to draw more from life, so hopefully that helps develop actual forms rather than flattening the image with icons and symbols. Yeah, I think a really good example is there's this great Ian McKay drawing I saw recently. Um, see if we can look at it briefly. Yeah, buddy. Oh, it's so good. He's so good. It's not fair. It is fair. It's so fair. Ian's the best guy ever. If you look at this Ian McKay drawing, Hello. 
look at that dude so he just like he, he does exactly that right he's sketching in form using his strokes he's not drawing any symbols for what he thinks a nose is or an eye is he's simply drawing in the light the form using light in his way the lack of where it is you see he's clearly defining the planes of what is getting hit by light and what is not and it's clearly pushing and pulling things back and forth in the form very very simple way and you zoom out super readable easy is it 100 percent correct maybe not but that's the thing is that this is all clear form right versus like drawing in symbols for what you think an eye is and then an eyebrow then going all right time to shade it's like what how like how are you drawing really all right i'm gonna have to end it here guys um oh i want to talk about this forever now though i want to talk about it forever wow but i like this little sketch guy that was fun i like this little fairy sketch character we can do a little flower petals are flowing up because of magic wow who would have thought from a magical pond Ooh, there's stuff happening there's a glowing object he's about to grab a powerful object that is magical and he has stolen it it's a pearl a pearl from deep under the ocean and he will use it for nefarious purposes because he's evil <laughs> there you go boom easy easy money baby um oh my god there's more while drawing says, hey yo, come across your channel a few days ago. Uh, and have been watching some of your old lives while drawing. Uh, saw you live now, thought I'd say hi. Your official project really inspired me. Let's go, welcome, wild drawing, let's go, welcome. You're awesome. Wild drawing and wild card, whoa, <laughs> insane. When in doubt, wireframe it out, always think in 3D, that's true, Count is right. Wild card says, thank you so much for the answer. I know I have a lot of questions, but it's easier to ask in a live format than bugging people in DMs. It's true, and that's why I do these live streams, man. Direct to consumer. Direct to consumer information at no, no cost to consumer. <laughs> yeah, anything that I can give to you guys for free, I will. Um, it's the stuff that it's like uh, when you need to do practice one-on-one -on -one and get critiques. That's when like, it's a lot of time and it's one-on-one, -on -one, so that's, that's when the classes are good. Um, but yeah, stay tuned, guys, tomorrow for the class announcement. Um, it's going to be 12 spots only for the seven week program. It's going to be in February through March, February and March, seven weeks sometime. I'll, I'll have the dates tomorrow. You'll see. Um, but stay tuned. If you want to get notified for that, then definitely join the free tier of the Patreon. And if you want to, um, actually join the discord, you can just, you know, join the scout tier at three bucks. It's like, it's nothing super, super easy. And we do character design challenges in there. We hang out together. We talk art. We do all that fun stuff. Um, and yeah, it's super worth, it's a great deal. Definitely join the discord and support the channel. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for, for watching. If you're new here, then subscribe if you want to see more. Uh, if you like this video as strange as it was, then like the video. <laughs> um, and yeah, def and comment, tell me the stuff you want to see. If you guys want to see me do tutorials, then co uh, tell me in the comments what kind of tutorials you want to see. I've been collecting a list, so we'll see, we'll see um awesome awesome thank you for the stream oh dude my pleasure my pleasure oh you guys are great let's go oh, thanks for liking the video guy <laughs> all right um you guys are fantastic and i'll tell all the lurkers you guys are great i love you guys i love i love the lurkers and the chatters thanks for asking questions and thanks for being a great community you guys are amazing and incredible and uh let's do a little face cam moment and i will see you all tomorrow I'm streaming tomorrow as well, uh, probably briefly in the morning. So tune in then. All right, guys. See you later. Goodbye. <laughs>